is good yo it's your boy top back here with another video in this video today we are going to be going over the top 10 centers in nba 2k 21 my team now the center position is pretty stacked and there's quite a few guys that i like and when i was going through it there was 12 or 13 guys that i thought had potential to make this list some of those guys that didn't quite make the list included a guy like a pj brown didn't quite make the list big ben wallace couldn't quite make the list as well as a rick smith so those are the three guys that i think were the closest to making the list that couldn't quite make the top 10 but if you are new to the channel have not yet please smash the subscribe button as we're on the road to 35,000 subscribers and let's hop in to number 10 on the list Starting the list off at number 10 is Bill Lambeer. When, when I used to use the shot stick, one of my favorite centers in the game was Bill Lambeer because his release didn't matter as much. Now that his release matters a little bit more and knowing that Bill Lambeer has one of the worst, worst releases in the game hurts his value by quite a bit. But what Bill Lambeer gives you is a 6'11", center with a 7-3 wingspan 18 gold badge with two on silver hot spots from everywhere around the top of the arc does come with an 85 three ball very very good three ball can shoot the ball at a very high efficiency has that 75 start standing dunk with a 70 driving dunk can't handle the ball 44 speed is a killer but he does have a 69 lateral quickness which is a lot better but the 44 speed is a pretty big downfall of this Bill Lambier card. Shooting wise, does have catcher and shoot corner specialist. So some very good shooting badges. Defensively, he has some very good badges as well, including that silver clamps. So the speed is a killer, don't get me wrong, but he does have silver clamps as well as a decent enough lateral quickness. Tendency wise, obviously not gonna have very good tendencies and that Bill Lambier release is just absolutely terrible. In my opinion, he still gives you more upside compared to like a Big Ben Wallace just because of his offensive ability and just because you have to respect him as as a pure three-point shooter that is why bill lambier comes in at number 10 on my top 10 center list coming in at number nine is a guy that i probably would never run at the center position because he's only six foot nine in sam perkins six nine seven foot wingspan high spots from three out of five spots from around the arc does come with 20 gold badges 11 on silver and one bronze badge looking at sam here he does have an 87 three ball 85 standing dunk 75 driving dunk can't handle the ball at all with the 68 or 60 speed with a 50 lateral quickness defensively sam perkins is awful you know him and bill lambier are very very similar in what they're going to give you not much besides just the ability to stretch the four as a big that can shoot the ball defensive wise he does have some good interior defensive badges but he's not going to be able to guard a tree if you put sam perkins in the pick and roll he is going to get fried like a piece of bacon tendency wise obviously he's got a 58 on ball still tendency it's not bad brooke lopez release i do like that release uh quite a bit more than bill lambier's release and really that's what it comes down to i like sam perkins release release a ton more than Bill Lambier. They're really not comparable. Bill Lambier is more of that inside presence because he is a little bit taller. In my opinion, I'll still take Sam Perkins one step ahead of him coming in at number nine on my top 10 center list. Coming in at number eight on my top 10 center list is Diamond Hakeem Elijah one. Now, in my opinion, Hakeem is just a little bit, not, not to say he's outdated, but he used to be a lot better compared to the field than he is now. Hakeem seven feet tall, seven three wingspan, hot spots from basically everywhere in the mid-range area two out of fame badges 18 on gold two on silver 53 ball not going to be able to shoot the ball at all does have a decent enough standing dunk with a 58 driving dunk 70 speed which is not bad i want to say that 70 speed for a center at seven feet tall is not bad at all 58 lateral quickness is i'd like to see that a little bit higher then you hop into his rebounding stats and all of his interior defensive stats which are super super good finishing wise around the rim he does have some good finishing badges shooting wise he does have the silver catch and shoot so from the mid-range area he should be knocked down hall of fame dream shake is not a good hall of fame badge does have that gold post spin technician and silver break smart starter defense wise a big hall of fame badge here in rim protector as well as a ton of gold badges now i know i've used i played splash edition once and splash applied the hall of fame rebounder chase rebound chaser to hakeem and trust me if you're a center you're gonna need rebound chaser in this game hopping into his tendencies he does have a 59 on both seats tendency as well as that 90 standing dunk tendency set shot 18 i don't really love hakeem's release but you know what you're getting out of hakeem olajuwon he is the epitome of an inside center and i'm not a huge fan of inside centers but you still have to respect what hakeem olajuwon can give you Coming in at number seven on my top 10 centers list is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 7-2, wingspan, same thing as Hakeem as well as the hot spots around the mid-range area. 31 three balls, so he's not gonna be able to shoot the ball from three at all. 80 standing dunk, 75 driving dunk, does have a 56 speed with a 37 lateral quickness. So Hakeem is gonna move better than Kareem and you have to know that, you have to know what you're getting out of both these players. 
But what I like about Kareem is he's taller, he's lengthier, and he's going to protect the rim just a little bit better. If you run zone, Kareem is a staple of that inside zone. He really is. If you want a center to kind of be that rim protector, he is that. Has some very good defensive badges. You guys can see the gold rebound chaser. He has that over Hakeem that you don't even have to apply. 100 standing dunk tendency, 90 driving dunk tendency. I personally like Kareem's jump shot from the mid-range a lot more than Hakeem's too. And basically, that's all there is to know about this Kareem card. He's not going to be able to dribble, but in the pick and roll, he's going to be that inside center. And I personally like Kareem quite a bit. He comes in at number seven on my top 10 center list. Coming in at number six is Diamond Al Horford and a guy that I have mixed feelings about. Very mixed feelings about this Al Horford card. 6'10", 7' wingspan, cold zones from both corners is an absolute killer because they matter quite a bit this year. 80, 83 pointer, 75 driving dunk, 50 ball handle, 53 speed with a 67 lateral cleanness. So you compare these even defensive stats, he looks better than Kareem, but Kareem is seven feet two and, and that's, or seven foot two. And that's a big, big difference. Al does give you the, the option to go five out though. But the problem is Al has those cold zones from both the corners. Can Al still knock down very consistently from those spots? Absolutely. But he has the hot zone hunter badge and he doesn't have hot zones from either corner. And it does hurt his value quite a bit. I still don't mind Al Horford, especially when you badge him out. If you badge him out, upgrade some of these badges. I think he has the upside to be one of the best centers in the game. It's just a lot of these un unfinished badges is what i call them with the bronze and silver badges as well as cold zones from both corners hurts him quite a bit dunk tendencies aren't good on um, 64 on ball steel tendency isn't bad though sigs i hate his jump shot uh, it's super super hard to time i've green with it a little bit but i just i'm not comfortable shooting the ball with al horford at all and his dribble six it doesn't matter because he's not going to be able to dribble Al Horford does give you the ability to run five out as well as be a decent enough defender. He comes in at number six on my top 10 center list. Coming in at number five is Pink Diamond Bob Lanier, a century award, 6'11", 7'2", wingspan, 45 three ball with a very good midi, 90 standing dunk, 80 driving dunk, can't handle the ball at all, but he does give you a 76 speed with a 66 lateral quickness. If there's one thing I've learned about the center position, speed matters so, so much. Finishing wise, I, the majority of his badges are finishing badges, which I do not love. I wish he had more defensive badges than he does, such as like a defensive leader, heart crusher, intimidator. Those are badges you need as an inside center. They, You must have those badges. If he's not going to give you the ability to shoot, he has to be an elite defender. And he's an okay defender, but he's just not that next step as a defensive player. Bob Lanier still, still can give you a ton. 85 standing dunk tendency, which is very, very important. Six wise, his release isn't great, but from the mid-range area, he still is knocked down. Obviously, dribble six don't matter. As a free essential reward, Bob Lanier is absolutely incredible. Coming in at number five on my top 10 center list. Coming in at number four may come as a surprise to a lot of people. That is Evo Pink Diamond Artist Gilmore. Seven feet two with a, I think, seven five wingspan. So you might say, why him over a guy like Lanier? First of all, he's three inches taller off the rip. You, that's one thing you need to know. He's already three inches taller as well as just being an incredible interior defender. 65 speed with a 65 lateral quickness is great for a guy who is seven feet two. It's not like he's just, you know, a 6'10". He's 7'2 and got 65, 65. That's decent enough. 68 on ball steel tendency as well. 19 gold badges with one on silver. As you guys can see, he does have the rim protector box, defensive leader, heart crusher, intimidator, moving truck, rebound chaser, post move, lockdown, tireless defender, worm. Look at the defensive badges he has compared to Lanier, and that's going to tell you all you need to know. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say if you apply badges, I don't know what badges Lanier can get, but just as a core card, give me Artist Gilmore over Lanier 10 times out of 10. I'll probably replace Artist soon enough because of his lack of shooting ability, but for now, he is in my lineup. Coming in at number three for me is Pink Diamond Nate Thurman. Now, he is a token rewards who I would not recommend locking in because I don't think he's going to be valuable for the first qualifier. But there's no doubt he is a pretty good center in the game. 6'11", 7'2", wingspan, can't shoot at all from the three-point line, can hardly shoot from mid-range. Does have the 97 standing dunk rating with an 85 driving dunk rating, can't handle the ball. Does have a 75 speed with a 73 lateral quickness. The thing about it, you look, 21 gold badges and two Hall of Fame badges. And elsewhere, he only has six badges. So you know, 
Based on that alone, he's going to have 17 of the, de of the defensive badges. And just look at the defensive badges 2K gave him. Intimidator and Rim Protector on Hall of Fame with all of these gold badges. Heart Crusher and Interceptor are the first two badges I'm applying to Nate Thurman. And once he gets those two, he will be absolutely elite. You hop into his tendencies. 100 standing dunk. 100 driving dunk tendency. As well as a 95 contest uh, shot tendency i don't know how much i really value that but it is important to know obviously jump shot 35 i don't know really know what that's what that's like but no doubt on the defensive end nate thurman is the best defensive center in nba 2k21 coming in at number two on my top 10 center list is amethyst Kristaps porzingis seven foot three with a seven and six wingspan two out of fame badges seven on gold ten silver badges with a six bronze badge looking at kp he does have an 82 midi as well as an 82 three ball 85 standing dunk 75 driving dunk can't really handle the ball a 69 speed with a 59 lateral quickness isn't the worst now i know i've said a lot but a 69 speed with a 59 lateral quickness with his ability to shoot at his height is absolutely insane you look at his finishing badges cross key score drops never pick and roll or put back boss as well as some other low tier finishing badges shooting wise pick and pop are a very very bad important badge right there as well as pump fake maestro does have gold catch and shoot with silver deep fades green machines i don't know if he can get range extender i, I still do not know i doubt it because i haven't really seen a kp with range extender yet Playwise wise does have gold dream stake at shake as well as a uh, silver break starter post spin technician and defensive wise a lot of room for improvement for kp in the defense on the defensive side of the ball tendency wise you do see a 100 standing dunk tendency as well as a 90 driving dunk tendency defensive wise the 55 on ball steal tendency is it is what it is you know what chris Tapps is going to give you from the corners he is absolutely knocked down if you run five out kp is the guy for you because even if he doesn't have that that, that great a defense, he's seven foot three. You can move with Chris Stapps if he's seven foot three with his 69 speed. That is ridiculously good. Brooke Lopez release, which I absolutely love. Dribble six don't really matter. I love KP's release and I love his height. That is why he comes in at number two on my top 10 center list. I'm not going to sit here and lie with you. It's tough determining the top two. But I think George Mikan is one step ahead of Chris Stapps Porzingis at this time of the game. And it all starts with the hot spots in both the quarters. If you run five out, which is probably the most popular offense right now, incorporating a little pick and pop in there, George Mikan is knocked down from both those corners. Now, his release is something I obviously still need to get better with. But he does it come with an 83 ball, a 6'10", 7'1", wingspan. Does have a 95 standing dunk with a 75 driving dunk. 69 speed with a 55 lateral quickness. So... Speed and lateral quickness are basically the same, but look at the defensive badges that Mike and comes that Mike and comes with compared to KP, and that matters so so much. Such as like a rebound chase, rim protector, heart crush, your defensive leader. All those badges matter so so much. As well as the shooting badge, you got catch and shoot, green machine, green machine, hot zone hunter. If you apply quarter specialist, he is going to be absolutely knocked down. Finishing wise, drop step or put back boss, as well as six other gold finishing badges. Playmaker wise, does have the gold break starter, as well as Hall of Fame post spin technician. Tendency wise, 90 standing and driving dunk tendency with a 67 on ball steal tendency. Jump shot four, which obviously, like I said, I still need to get better with. But when it comes down to it at this point of 2K, I believe George Mikan is the best center in the game. All right, that is going to wrap it up for my top 10 centers in NBA 2K21. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and find it somewhat informational. Comment down below your top 10. Who is I too high on? Who is I too low on? Because your guys' opinion is very, very important to me, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys and have a blessed day.